welcome you to another broadcast of the TPH, the present help in the time of need. It's rather strange how many inadvertently, let me put it that way, undermine the sovereignty, the authority, the the extent of the power of God, especially as touching our lives. And because of lack of this understanding, many fall into error on a daily basis. We've been discussing help on a daily basis from part one to part seven. Today, the seventh day of November 2022 is the eighth pass. And God is leading me to point out one or two areas that can be able to help us. That as soon as we take cognizance of that area, our help will begin to flow ceaselessly. My prayer for somebody worshiping with us tonight is that henceforth, as we latch on to this revelation and help from God, this secret, divine secret, our help will begin to flow without hindrance in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I want to welcome you once again to another broadcast. To the glory of God, the church of God is marching on and the gates of Hades will never be able to prevail. Let's worship God together. Who is there like thee? Oh, oh Lord. You created us in your likeness. Who is there like thee, O oh, Lord? It's an honor to stand and worship you. We lift our hands to the great I am. What's an is and is to come we lift our hands to the great I am who can compare with who can Father, no can compare with you in our lives. Whether we acknowledge it or not, nobody can compare with you. You are awesome. You are marvelous. You are glorious in our lives. On daily basis, your handwriting, your signature is all over creation. Whether man observe, whether man identify, whether man acknowledge it or not, it does not stop. It does not stop fail to reflect the fact that your handwriting and signature is over all. What a mighty God we serve. 
Thank you for your hand upon our lives. Thank you for your grace. If not for you, where would we be? Be magnified and be exalted in Jesus' mighty name we have worshipped. Welcome to the present help. And the subtitle of today still remains Help on Daily Basis, Part 8. Praise the Lord. I want to share some things with you. I want to share some things with you. I noticed that uh, many of us, we take God for granted. And the one thing in my own little few years I've known God that I've been working with God, God has been helping me, is that God is jealous over his statutes. When you obey him via his word, you are one person that God will likely not joke with. It's good to have a deep understanding. In the previous lessons that we have taught, that we have worshipped together, we talked about the importance of receiving help on a daily basis. That a life without help from God, that life will eventually dry up. If you cut the roots of a plant that have the tendency to grow and put it in a place where it can sprout, if it is not nurtured, watered adequately, it will dry up and die. Some can die and recover. Some, when they die, they dry off totally. No matter what you do again, they will never grow. So also, one of the natural appendages that God gave to us as mankind is our mouth. Many use their mouth anyhow. But believe me, the mouth is more to us than what many of us actually may envisage. Do you know the mouth has the capability of lifting you to heights unimaginable in life? And the mouth, the same mouth can ruin in one day. What some people painstakingly built for years can be ruined by the mouth in just seconds. I pray for somebody listening to me. All your labor of years will not be destroyed by your mouth in Jesus' name. Amen. I say amen to it myself. The Bible said in the book of James, He said, Should it be hard that out of the same mouth that cold water can enter, hot water too? Meaning, this same mouth has the capability to cross and can all likewise change the courses to bless it. The mouth is so pivotal that to pronounce blessings upon man or your own child, you have to use the mouth. Nobody can bless a child by looking ordinarily at the child. You must open your mouth and utter something. When Noah heard that one of his children mocked his nakedness because he drank alcohol and he fell asleep and he was exposed. When he came out, he decided to destroy the foundation of that child. I feel, I felt that anger was to the extreme because he actually not said anything to that child but he destroyed the future of that child by cursing the child of that child. That is his grandchild. It was the mouth he used. If he had not uttered anything, no matter what goes on in your heart, on your mind, on the tablets of your mind, once you don't give flesh to it, nothing will happen. Whether either for good or for bad. If bad thing is coming to your mind, if you don't say it out, it will not come. But the moment you begin to say it out, 
Job said, what I have feared has now come upon my life. I'm trying to take us somewhere. So, the mouth is pivotal in receiving blessings on a daily basis. When you use your mouth positively, especially to praise God on a daily basis, that there is no day that will dawn or break, that you will not say something good to God. Help is not far from you. David said in Psalm 68 verse 19, he said, he said, Blessed be the Lord who loads us daily with benefits. How can God, the creator of everything, hear that from his creation? And God will not say, come here, this young boy, let me do another. When our children perform well in school, we buy them gifts. How do you now imagine the king of kings when you, even without looking, saying, God, I did there, go, but you just wake up or you open your eyes at night and say, God, thank you. If that is all you just said, say, oh, Lord, thank you. Ah. <laughs> it brings joy to the heart of God. When some of us wake up on daily basis, it's complaints. God does not want us to be a complaining vessel. God wants us to be happy always. And everything has been created for our enjoyment. But we must know how to leverage on them. We must know how to leverage on anything that we need. So this evening, I want to say to you, I want to discuss something on testimony. How it's aching to aiding your blessings on daily basis. Do you know that some people have never testified in their lives to any good thing God has ever done? But they are very, very quick to point out areas that God has not been a blessing to them. I can't blame them. It's because we are living in a time and season of grace. Some people have not done up to that. And God has taken them off the face of the universe. Still, you cannot blame God on that because God has spoken earlier in his word. He said, I will bless those I will bless. And those I will not bless, I will not bless them. Nobody can query him. Nobody can question him. That is the reason why in my language, in Karo Jirela, we call him Kabiosi, the unquestionable God, the unquestionable one. Some people never testify. Some have gotten so carried away, so familiar with testimony that we come before God on Sundays in our churches, on, on days we have fellowship, that we just give it anyhow. Actually, some of us, our testimonies are actually for the hearing of the people, not for God's ears. So that for people to know how big we are, how blessed we have become, the latest vehicle we are driving, that testimony is devoid of giving glory to God. But if you get up every Sunday to testify, and inside your testimony, God, will, God is glorified. Something more is going to happen to you. Let me give you an example. When I open our text for today, you will see. But Isaiah 42, verse 8. Isaiah 42, verse 8. God has warned. He said, My glory I will not give to any man, neither will I share my praises with any graven image. I am God. That is my name. Isaiah 42, verse 8. This should make us to be very careful when we are dealing with the deity of God. Our God is supreme. He's powerful. He's the Ale Shelewi, the one that can do 
and boast about his doings. Is Yale will the one that can speak and do what he said he has said he will do. Is your Babati Balai Lala the one that can save the one that had no single relative? Is your Biamolo Jobuburu Lojo Gule is the parent in the day of terror? In the day when battle is fierce. Oro Manisha Fayati is the one who sends on error and goes on that error with you. God is the Aaron Nisha Tambanilo, Aaron Banilo. When he sends you on error, is there, he will go on that error with you to guide you. is the one who speaks and it comes to pass. Orobe Ribe, as he thinks, so it will become. Osobe Shebe, the one who speaks, who says something, will be whatever he says, will honor his speaking. Somebody is listening to me. I pray for you tonight. That as you use your mouth right, may Isaiah 65 verse 24 come to pass in your life. Amen. Isaiah 65 verse 24 says, It shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. What they are here praying, I will hear. Amen. May God have respect for your bended knees. Amen. May your innate thoughts attract the mercy of God. Your good innate thoughts May they attract the mercy of God in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, haven't you seen the grace, the, great, the greatness of our God and the graciousness of God? There are times that even before you think of something, before it comes to your mind, God is just there. You are thinking of acquiring something, getting something, suddenly, provision is made. That is the God that we serve. I thank God where I worship. I used to tell them we celebrate God a lot when we testify. Sometimes when they finish, when testimonies finish, I'll just begin to dance. Our God is too much. Somebody sang a song. I don't know the song much, but it says, There is nothing that you can do. Protocol breaker. I think. There is nothing that you can do, Jehovah overdo it. I have tasted your love. Jehovah, oh your man, name man. I love that song. There is nothing, nothing you cannot do, protocol breaker. There is nothing you cannot do, Jehovah overdo it. I have tasted of your love. I've seen your mighty works. Mountain mover, Jehovah. There is nothing God cannot do. Friends, I said earlier, for you to receive help on daily basis, you must know how to testify. You. Sister Toby and Abby sang a song. I love her songs. <laughs> I love when people minister and use massive word. That lady knows how to romance God. She has done some dangerous work. She has done them down. Ah, she's a very, very dangerous lady. There's a song she sang. And each time that song comes to my mind, it brings me to be thankful, to testify about God, so that God takes me to the another level, another realm of help, of breakthrough. She said, Simba, so, so, 
Tiboba, Sopolo, Ocheto. Tiboba, Sopolo, Ocheto. Abarabore, Jeremio. If I say God is not doing enough, He has not done enough. Said, I am of all persons the most selfish, the most self centered. Abarabo Oregia is a self centered fellow who only think only of themselves. That song touches me deep anytime I remember. May God bless our heart. More grace, many more miles to cover. The reason why many of us don't testify is that we have gotten too familiar with God, like Uzzah. The Bible talked about the end of Uzzah. Uzzah was consumed by fire from heaven. He died instantly. Everybody became afraid. Hey, friend, don't be too familiar with God. Whatsoever you have received from God, you have not seen anything yet. What did I say? You ain't seen nothing yet. What did I say? I can't hear you in the studio. You, you ain't seen, seen nothing yet. yet. The Bible says in Ephesians 3.20, Ephesians 3.20, that God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, beyond what you think or imagine or can ask for. All you need to do is to know how to praise God. For one minute or 30 seconds, join me. To praise it. Hallelujah. O God is full of mercy. E mi afijo iyi onolu mi. Iro alaye ni oni oboti e. Hallelujah. O God is full of mercy. Hallelujah. 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 O God is full of mercy. E mi afijo iyi iyi onolu mi. Iro alaye. That song says, Hallelujah, glory belongs to God. God deserves the glory. Say, I will use praises and dance to give glory to God. The ancestry of the living, in all I, ancestry and the, of the living can praise God the way it ought to be. In Isaiah 38, before we go to that, to our text today, let me just go there briefly. Isaiah 38, verse 19. God is not a joker, friend. Let's take it from verse 18. Isaiah 38, verse 18. To 20. He says, for the grave cannot praise thee. Isaiah 38, verse 18 to 20. For the grave cannot praise thee. Death cannot celebrate thee. They that go down into the pit cannot hope for thy truth. Let me tell you, for those who have died, the level you can operate to praise God now, you have an edge over every day. Me and you have an edge. Why is God so particular about the living? Because every day is a bonus. When you are alive, you have another bonus of a day to make things that are wrong right. To correct wrongs. Say, thee that go down into the pit cannot hope for thy truth. Verse 19, which is our key verse and 20. Isaiah, Prophet Isaiah says, the living the living, he shall praise thee. As I do this day, the father to the children shall make known thy truth. The living, the living, he shall praise thee. Oh, kuto tiku kole ni o ala yeri o mani o e mi mi mo. There's a song we sing that says, "Every living soul, every living soul, praise the Lord. Every living soul, every living soul, praise the Lord. I 
Are you a living soul wherever you are? I, if you are a living soul, praise the Lord. I am a living soul. I am a living soul. I praise my God because the most high reigns. The most high reigns. The most high reigns in my life today. The most high reigns. The most high reigns. The most high reigns in my life today. Verse 90 says, The living, the living, he shall praise thee as I do this day. The father to the children shall make known thy truth. Then verse 20, he said, Will you praise God? Look at verse 20. He said, The Lord was ready to save me. But as you open your mouth to begin to praise him, God is ready. He's ready to move into the situation. He said, The Lord was ready to save me. Therefore, we will we sing my songs to the stringed instrument as we are playing keyboard right, right now in the studio. Hallelujah. So God loves stringed instruments. I will sing my song to the stringed instruments all the days of our life in the house of the Lord. Listen to me. In the book of Acts chapter 16, by the time I'll be mentioning our test, I'll be rounding up. In Acts chapter 16, from verse 25, the Bible says, And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. Acts chapter 16, verse 25. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundation of, of the prison was shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened. Ah! Somebody is going to praise God. So much so that doors that have been shut against me and you shall be opened this season. In the name of Jesus! Amen. In Jebu people sang a song. They said, Iye lo fe, okwe lo njere. Iye lo fe, okwe lo njere. Oba toda mi si doni o. Iye lo fe, o. Says, God is looking for praise and thanksgiving. That the God who has preserved me alive till date, all he's looking for is praise and thanksgiving. May your mouth never be stopped in giving praise to God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Opa oni tole no mi o. In you oni tole no mi. Whatever you are worshiping with me with this song. Opa oni tole no mi o. In you oni tole no mi. Ni tori mi pe. Ore oluwa la ye mi kofigba konduro. Anu oluwa lori mi kofigba konye. That song says, Praises will never cease from my mouth. Thanksgiving will never cease. Ah, he said, Because God's goodness in my life upon my head has never ceased at any time. So, therefore, I will never cease to praise Him. In that Acts chapter 16, the Bible says in verse 27. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaking. And immediately, as they were pressing God, what happened? All the doors, all the doors were open, and everyone's bands were loose. It means praise and worship have the capability of bringing deliverance into your life. If you are a praiser of God, you can never be under bondage for too long. Because Bones will be broken, chains will be destroyed, and battles will, will, will be won. Wars will be won, and victory will become yours. It comes instantly, immediately. Tonight, before you sleep, friend. This is the middle of the week. Or when you wake up tomorrow, take time. Just give God praise. Thank Him for who He is. Thank Him for what He has done in the past. Thank Him for what He is doing right now. And then, finally thank Him for what He is about to do. What He is here to do. 
Do you know how much it touches God when you thank Him for what He's yet to do in your life? Tonight I prophesy upon you and upon my own life. As the Lord opened the book of remembrance for Mordecai, and he was remembered by kings, by helpers and portion assigned to his destiny. May God open the book of remembrance Amen. for me and you Amen. as we praise God Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. On the account of tonight's worship, may God open the book of remembrance for me and you Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. The Bible said the person that was in charge to put Paul and Silas in bondage became afraid. When you open your mouth to testify about God, to praise Him, do you know singing praise is a testimony of God? It's a testimony to God. When you open your mouth, it's a game changer. Psalm 89 verse 1, Psalm 89 verse 1 says, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing of the mercies of my God. Saying with my mouth, will I make no thy faithfulness? Oh, thy faithfulness with my mouth, will I make no thy faithfulness to all generations? I will sing of the message of the Lord. Forever I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. That how would you say God would not love David? Till he died, even when he was weak, God pampered him to death. Till he departed from this world. Ah. The Bible says, Asha shall share his feet in butter. Somebody is listening to me. Ah! Go with shear your feet inside butter in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Turn with me to 1 Samuel 17. We'll take a few verses there by the grace of God. From verse 32, 1 Samuel 17 to 37, and I'll pick one or two verses and then. We're done. First Samuel 17, verse 32. David said, I said in the last broadcast, I said, by one man, fear came. I told you, the mouth can induce fear. When you hear a message from a wrong person, Pastor Matthew, Abiodu and Shimolo, he said, when anybody brings anything to him in the night, maybe like a message, letters, he hardly read them because he doesn't want anything to spoil his mood as he goes to bed. In the morning when he has finished worshiping God and God is in charge of the day, then he can go ahead and read them. I love that style. And I started adopting it. I don't like read, reading rubbish before I go to bed. The Bible says, dreams come by the reason of multitude of businesses. Some people have bad dreams by the reason of maybe horror movies they watch. Praise the Lord. One man came, Goliath, for 40 days he was speaking and the entire nation of Israel became afraid. One man, what did he use? He did not come because of his size. They were not daunted. But when Goliath started speaking, and he was boasting about his prowess. The battle he has won. The Bible says the entire nation of Israel. They became afraid. The Bible says in Hebrews. That by one man sin came into the world. Said by another man. Salvation came for mankind. Through Jesus Christ. Our Lord Jesus Christ. Goliath came. Fear enveloped Israel. There was no way. They would have gone home, gone home in victory. All of them would have died at war. Then God sent one inconsequential small boy to the eyes of mankind, but he was 
He was a warlord before God. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 maybe from verse 20 or so or 18 he said God chose the most foolish things of this world to confound the wise. Verse 24 says because Jesus Christ is the power and the wisdom of God but that's where we're going Earlier in the verse, in that chapter, it says, God chose the most foolish things to confound the wise. Those who feel they know everything. Through one man, one person can bring a message that can cause problems. In the course of this study, we are talking about the 12 spies in the book of Numbers. This is another occasion. If you read 1 Samuel 17, you would have seen all that Goliath was doing. But verse 32, Praise the Lord. Amen. Verse 32 of 1 Samuel 17. And David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but a youth. And this Philistine has been a man of war from his youth. You are just starting life. This one has started battling going for war from before your age. And David said to Saul, listen to this. I'm coming to some things. Thy servant kept his father's sheep. And there came a lion. Hear me well. Verse 34. And a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me. I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. Thy servant, David was talking to King Saul. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. And these uncircumcised Philistines shall be as one of them. See, they are defied the armies of the living God. Verse 37 David said, Moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the power of the lion and out of the power of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul so said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with thee. <laughs> what happened after? From verse 41, as Goliath came nearer, there were stories. He cursed David, and David cursed him. The God that answered by fire answered his favorite servant. Verse 51, David was standing upon the chest of Goliath. Goliath was already a semi-dead fellow. He was in deep coma, which he never woke up from. Praise the Lord. Now I want to bring out something here. By one man in verse 32, fear came upon a entire nation through a negative news. Bishop Oedepo, David Oedepo, have a slogan and I learned very early from him. He said, never allow a negative word to be dropped before you. Pick it up and send it back to sender. Don't allow negative energy people surround you. They will destroy you. Let me break it. To, uh, uh, say it in English. One rich man in the midst of six poor persons, if he's not careful, his mentality will be warped and exchanged. You must always be positive. Even when what God does, you do you do not understand. Continue to make sure you are positive. One man came, everybody was afraid. David, when another man came, David, he changed the narrative. Everybody's confidence was restored. Now they had somebody who will lead the war, a champion that will go ahead of them. Hey, in your life, may God send you a champion. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. May you never be without help from God. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
May you never be without help from God and help us of, from God in the name of Jesus Christ. David said in verse 32, don't let anybody be afraid. Paul tried to dissuade him. This man has been a man of war. Say, oh God, leave the matter. In the book of Daniel, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, they said, oh king, we are not afraid to answer you in this matter. If you, if our God that we serve continually cannot deliver us, then we will die. But we want you to know, O oh king, we will not bow down to your idol. No matter the status of anyone you may be working with, if there is a negative word, return it instantly. Don't let it stick to your life. It can destroy you. It can mar you. Did he say, I have fought both the lion and the bear? Verse 34 and 35 and 36. From verse 34 and 36. At this junction, let me say something as a random. Do you know the prowess that the lion is capable of performing? In my language, they said is the animal that is known for giving marks, tribal marks. Kinimolona. The one that slaughtered past animal without a knife. The lion that is so quick in his acts, in his ways. And David said he slaughtered a lion. Now, let me tell you something about lion. I want the National Geographic alone, Animal, animal Channel. The lion call is not permitted to go for a hunt. When the hunt has been concluded, they bring their cubs, the young ones, to come and eat. When the lion is still about 18 months, they are still under their mother. They are no more breastfeeding, but they still depend so, on survival, on their parents. So for a lion to begin to partake in hunts, they get to around two and a half to three to three years. That is maturity in the uh, 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 Clan of lions. That is maturity age. So David was not talking about a small immature animal that he can carry as a cat in his hand, in the cook of his of his arm. He was talking about a matured lion that can pick up a sheep. That is a matured lion. Have you seen the retractable claws of the lion? When lion feels he's failing his horn in hunting, do you know what the lion does? He goes near a very hard tree and begins to bite into the back of the tree. You think, is he eating the back of a tree? No, he's sharpening his teeth. His insults is canine. Then the, the claws, the lion will go on top of a rock and begin to claw on the rock to sharpen the claws. Lion can disempower a buffalo if at the right angle. That is the lion that David, a human being, killed it. I'm about to prophesy something heavy into your life. David talked about the bear. One day, I was watching the animal planet and they were describing the paw of the bear and the claws of the bear. The claws of the bear can only retract. Half of it can retract. But when it comes out, it comes out fully. It's almost, almost about one foot. About 12 inches in length. Claw of the bear. As bold as the lion is, the lion does never, never dare to fool around with a bear. You hardly hear that a lion killed a bear or a tiger. Because the armory that the bear parade 
they are very impressive CVs that can make any any enemy to think twice. When one researcher, zoologist, was described describing the bear, he said something I want to share with you. For you to know, you may have been reading for Samuel 17 and be taking this in as a joke. I'm trying to talk about your mouth being a pivot to giving you help on daily basis. The man said the paw of the bear is like the size of a serving plate. I went inside my kitchen of my house and I brought out the serving plate and I looked at it and it said the palm of the bear is like that, the size of a serving dish, of a, of a dish you used to eat. In your house, I wanted to look at the size of a dish. Then you imagine, and on top of that size of a, of a, of a dish, you have dangerous claws that can retract and come in about the food. When you are going inside the forest, zoologists, they have a way they can track the bear. They will see its marks on top, on body of trees, when it's trying, you know, trying to sharpen them. Do you know this, the power in the neck? The neck, the, the, the strength of the bear is in, on his neck, his shoulder, and, his, and the, on his chest. That is why they say the bear can kill with a hog. If the lion should get or the tiger should get to the embrace of a bear, they are dead. And David, such an animal, David said, I caught it by his beard and I smote them. And he was able to escape those dangerous claws and those dangerous teeth. The teeth of the bear, when the lion roars and the bear roars, the lion will turn. The idea no fool with his opponent. And despite doing that, achieving that, David did not keep quiet. The day he faced his Goliath, he brought out his weapon. The weapon was his mouth. He testified about God. Somebody is listening to me. As you testify in this season, every lion of this world and bear of this world troubling your destiny, all of them shall be destroyed in Jesus' name. Amen. No parashe. Every line of this world, troubling you and me, may the Lord destroy them and silence them forever Amen. in Jesus' name. Your mouth is very powerful. Who is to praise God? When you are praising God, I have brought out enough testimonies from us and everywhere. As you use your mouth, testimonies will abound. I deliberately took time on this because it has been a burden upon my heart. You will end this year well. Amen. You have your testimonies. Amen. Your victory will not elude you. Amen. Your blessings for this year, your victories will not be rolled over into 2023. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. This year, me and you will obtain our victory. Amen. We will obtain our favors. Amen. Our blessings will come to us. Amen. Our prosperity will not go to another in Jesus' name. Amen. According to Ephesians 3.20, that says God is able to exceed my thinking and your thinking. I want to say, if you have not given your life to Christ, I don't like to finish any broadcast without making an tackle. Friend, if you are not born again, whatever we pray will be temporary. The enemy can cheat you. The Bible says in John 10, 10, that devil is a thief. He likes to cheat, to kill and to destroy. But if you come to the side of Jesus, Jesus said, I am come to give life and to give the life to you abundantly. Whatever you are, this portal of mercy was opened before because of you. Please put your hand on your chest. Pray with me before I round up. Say after me, say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Have mercy upon my soul. I am a wretched sinner. Be my personal Lord and my Savior. Forgive me my sins. Be my personal Lord and my Savior. Write my name in your book of life. Life. Thank you, Father. Jesus' name I pray. Friends, if you have prayed that prayer, I'm the one of the most happiest men on the face of the universe. You begin to see the finger of God. Learn to use your mouth. Your mouth can deliver food on your table. Don't you see a lot of comedians? 
his mouth. They call it Lassisi. The one with mouth. His mouth he used to stand up. His mouth. Kunle Ajayi, Mike Karemu, he used their mouth to blow saxophone. They hit stand up. Davido, he used his mouth to sing, to stand up. Kenny Black, he uses his mouth to sing. My friend, my brother, I love so much. Him and Kenny Black. A boss. A pororo. Just his mouth. People probably are calling, hey, this big mouth boy. Now, he's a big boy. And he's using the mouth to glorify God. And I love him so much. He never goes to any show without glorifying God. Friend, for giving your life to Christ is to give God all the glory and submit to him and say, Baba, I'm ready. Listen to me. Your life can never remain the same. From this moment onward, it's victory galore. Please, the numbers on the screen, get in touch as you desire. God will give us grace and give us function and leadership to give you direction as it pleases in Jesus' name. I want you to know that we love you so much. But no matter how much we love you, God loves you more. And it can never, it will never, it must never be over until you win. Until I come your way again. I want to say, God bless you. Keep winning. Go and succeed and win and return with testimonies in Jesus' name. I love you. Are so good, blessed be thy name, Lord. You are so kind, hallowed be thy name. I will 